Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are going to be checking out major scale pattern one in the key of G. It's the often referred to as the E shape. But being this is the first scale that we're learning as part of the major scale maestro course, I also want to talk a bit about how to learn scales and why it's so important to do it slowly. Now, when you're learning things, it's a little bit like writing computer code in your brain. It's much, much, much easier to get the code right and then run it than learn it with loads of bugs in it and then have to try and figure out when, what went wrong later on. So when you're learning scales, you want to do it really, really slowly, like painfully, weirdly slowly. Because if you get it right, and you get it right, say, five times, you play it through correctly five times in a row, your brain knows exactly what it should be doing. And then it's just a case of improving the speed that you play that set program. You think that actually there's quite a lot of complex stuff going on here about moving the pick, getting the fingers in the right spot on the right strings. There's a lot of information there. So really, when you're learning scales for the first time, learning a new scale pattern, you want to do it really slowly. Keep the scale diagram in front of you. Learn it a couple of strings at a time. Like I said, I'm going to go through this first pattern with you now in super slow-mo, but try and stick with this idea every time we learn a new scale pattern. So we're going to start here with the second finger on the third fret of the thicker string. That is the note G, the root note of the scale. So we're going to play that note and then little finger on the same string two frets higher, so the fifth fret where the dot is. Okay, so make sure you memorize that first of all, just second finger and fourth finger. Now on the next string, it's more or less the same, but we start with the first finger. So we're going to have first finger, second finger, and then fourth finger. Make sure third finger is not getting anywhere near playing any of these notes. So just now memorize this bit. So second finger, fourth finger, first finger, second finger, fourth finger. Note here that I'm talking more about finger numbers than frets, so it helps with the moving of the scale if you'd think of the finger numbers to create the pattern. So this first section, you want to absolutely make sure that's memorized before you go any further. Okay, so we're not using the third finger on those, we start with the second finger, fourth finger, one, two, four. When you can play that from memory without having to reference any sort of scale diagrams, we can move on to the next two notes. Now the middle two strings of the G major scale, or pattern one in any key, is first finger, third finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger, fourth finger. So the same on those middle two strings. Okay, if you have to go real slow and you've got to check, it's definitely third finger, yeah, that's okay. And then fourth finger, yeah. Looking at the diagram for every note, that's fine. That is much better than going, no, no. And it's, just don't do that. Just get it right. It's really, really, really important. You will learn a load faster if you do it slowly and get it right. I promise. It's the biggest mistake, especially teenagers. When I was a teenager, I just couldn't. I was always in a hurry to do everything. I couldn't just slow down. But if you do it a number of times, like five times, ten times, nice and slowly, your brain knows what to do. And then you can just play it faster and you'll find that you'll learn it better, learn it faster. You won't have a recurring issue that pops up from time to time. And it makes, means that you're hitting wrong notes in the scale. You really want your fingers to learn this properly. So middle two strings, first finger, third finger, fourth finger, then we join it up. So it's two, four, one, two, four. Now we didn't use the third finger for those first two, but now we are only going to use the third finger there with the outside two. And then I'd spend a bit of time just doing that. Just going through that first section of the scale. Do try and get the fingers up nice and close to the frets if you can. Okay, that's how you get a good note. Note that we're, we're still just playing up the scales. So you see, if you put a finger back here, it goes all crunchy. It wants to be like right up next to the fret. If you find that a little difficult, there's a lesson on the website called the finger stretching exercise. You might want to go and check that out if you're struggling with getting the fingers in the right frets. When you feel super confident with that and you're like, yeah man, I got it, I got it, we're good. It's actually the same as we had on these two strings, second, fourth, one, two, four, finger numbers, here. Second finger, fourth finger, one, two, 
four. So it's the same pattern here. Here. And one, three, four in the middle. And here, second finger, fourth finger, first, second, fourth. Now you want to spend some time just playing up that scale. Nice and slow. It can be a lot slower than this. I don't want to go painfully slow in the lesson and drive you all a bit crazy, but if I was learning this for the first time, it'd probably be about half this speed. But just absolutely making sure that I've got it right. I won't keep going, but you should be maybe doing that, say, 10 times would be a good amount. Making sure that you absolutely get it right. If you get it wrong, don't continue. If you make a mistake or put down the wrong finger, just stop and go, no, that wasn't right. Try and click your brain out to go like, that wasn't the right one. Don't remember that. And then start again at the beginning from the root note. So if you're going up and you go, ah, no, no, just stop. Don't then correct it. That's a really bad way of making the coding in your brain really complicated. So if you're going up, no, just stop, start again. But again, slow, make sure you go slow enough that you don't make mistakes. That's really the goal here. I'd much prefer not making any mistakes to having to continually go back to start the scale. Your, your aim should be no mistakes whatsoever. Once you can play the scale all of the way up, see if you can get all of the way up and down a bit. So I'm going to go a little faster. You wouldn't be doing it this fast if you've just learned it. But you go all the way up, straight back down. Uh, don't be afraid to go like, oh, now the middle two strings, that was one, three, four. So I'm going to start with a little finger, then third finger, then first finger. Yeah, there we go. And then it was the same. That's it. Okay, that's enough. Let's just go back to the beginning. Go up, back down. Here we go. And then again, if you've got to stop and think, you're like, yeah, I'm good here. I'm good here. Now, let me just think. It was two, four, one, two, four. Then it was second finger. You know, I'm not saying you have to talk to yourself, but speaking out loud can be helpful. Just really making sure that you get it right all of the way up and down with all down picks. So a cool little quirk about the five pattern system is that all of the patterns have 16 notes. This means that when you're playing four notes per metronome click, you can be playing the whole scale pattern over the two bars. So you have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Oh, see, there was another note here that's just snuck in. And that is the first finger. When you descend the scale, we go as low as we can in that particular pattern and then back to the root note. Okay, so the one difference when we're descending the scale, we go down to that note, the C F sharp, and then back up to the root note. It might seem a little bit weird in this particular pattern. It becomes more important with when we learn like pattern two where the root note is on the fourth string. The reason that starting and finishing on the root note is so important is because it helps our ears get used to the sound of the major scale. I'm sure some of you have heard of modes at least. Modes use the same notes as the major scale, but with a different tonal center. So if you start your major scale starting on a note other than the root, you might be training your ears to hear modes, which is a good thing later on down the line. But to start off with, I think it's really, really important. Always start and end on the lowest root note or the highest root note later on in the course, but the lowest root note for now. So you start here on the note G, lowest note, you'll go, all of the way up. Only once on the top note. We don't play the top note twice. We go all of the way back down again. This time we go down the scale as far as we can go and stop on the root note and then take yourself a little break. So just play through the pattern once, up and down, stop few seconds, give yourself a rest, and then do it again. Once you can do the scale consistently and you're not making any mistakes with the fingering, you might decide to move on to playing with alternate picking. So you would start with a down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. saying it 
out loud. Really, really good thing if you're struggling with the alternate picking. A lot of people find themselves doing two downs in a row or two ups in a row. Watch your hand. Hopefully, you've memorized your fretting hand. So watch your picking hand and say it out loud as you do it because you'll notice if you do an up pick when you say down, you're more likely to notice that the alternate picking's gone a little bit wrong. I wouldn't go too crazy on the alternate picking being a, something that's really important. I think it's a good thing to be able to do, but making music with the scales is more important. And definitely when we get into improvising, you don't need to worry about doing alternate picking at that point. It's really only used for, for, for practicing scales up and down. So let's just have a look now at the relationship between this G major bar chord. So this is an E shape. Like an open E chord, this is an E shaped bar chord. And if you see the scale fits perfectly around fits perfectly around this shape. So I don't recommend that you actually practice anything with this, but it's really important that you understand that the scale shape fits perfectly over the chord. As we progress on our guitar journey, understanding the function of the notes in the chords becomes more and more important. It's how we manipulate one chord shape into lots of other chord shapes is via the understanding of the function of the notes in the chord and the function of the scale notes around it. So it's a big deal. Just be aware of that shape of the chord as you play. Try and visualize that chord shape as you're going through that scale. So once you're hip with the major scale and you can play it with alternate picking at a consistent speed, no matter what really what the speed is, I would recommend that you start playing the major scale with a metronome. Now I have a whole lesson on playing the major scale and practicing with a metronome. I would suggest you check that lesson out. I'm not going to go through it all again here. Just make sure you start really, really slowly that you're still getting it right all the time. If you, if you try it at the slower speed, which I usually recommend is around 60 or 70 beats per minute, one uh, picked note per metronome click, if you can't do it at that speed, then you shouldn't be working with a metronome yet. So you need to work on it a little bit more independently. When you can get that tempo consistent, then you should start practicing with a metronome and gradually speeding the metronome up. Now I already mentioned this thing, the root note. So I said, hey, we're starting here on this note G. This is the root note for the G major scale. Now, just like bar chords, there's a G bar chord. If you've been studying this stuff, you might know that we've got a C bar chord up here with the root note on the 8th fret of the thicker string. So if we take exactly that same pattern, 2nd finger, 4th finger, 1st, 2nd, 4th, 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, but we start here on the 8th fret, we have the C major scale, because this is the note C, there's the chord. The major scale will always sound like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, no matter what note you start it from. And you can start on any note on the thicker string. The note that's falling under your second finger, the starting note, will be the note name of the key. In this particular case, I just plonk my second finger down there. This would be the key of B flat major scale. Here would be F sharp. It's no different. Here would be C sharp. This scale will of course work in any key, but I would recommend for now that you stick to the keys of G and C. This is because we form a kind of a visual representation of the scale. Like when we picture what the scale looks like in our imagination, we tend to see the dots and stuff with it. So while it is a good idea to practice in every key later on, I think it's really helpful to start keeping it a little bit simpler. Just the key of G and the key of C for now would be a really good way of building a solid foundation that we can build on and eventually play in every key. Now, I know you've only just learned these scales, but I would love for you to be doing some improvising with the scale shapes, making music out of them right away. Now, it might feel a little bit daunting just to be playing the scales over a backing track straight away. Like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's okay. I just want you to have a go at it this time. Even if it means you're playing the scale up and down over the backing track and just listening to it, that's okay. If you want to take it a little step up, you might want to remember that music is a language and therefore it's going to need breaths and kind of grammar. The idea just meaning don't play all the time. 
right? Just try and play a little bit, have a little rest for a breath, play a little bit, have a little rest. Repetition works really, really well. And so do restrictions. So a great thing that you can do is just restrict yourself to playing on one or two strings at a time and really exploring those deeply. You'll find good notes in them. You don't have to be playing the whole scale to be looking for the good notes. In fact, most times when you're doing a lead solo, you play on the thinner strings anyway. We're going to learn the thicker strings as well. But the, you know, generally speaking, you're on the thinner strings when you're doing a solo. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about keys and learning about what the chords are in each key. So if you've got a jam buddy, they can play any of the chords in the key that you're going to play in, and you can use the major scale in that key. And the two things will work perfectly, right? It really is that easy. If you've got a looper pedal, you can do it as well. So example, in the key of G, which we've been working in today, the chords are G, a minor, B minor, C, D, and E minor. So you can play any of those chords anywhere. I'm going to use maybe bar chords now, but you could use open chords and strum and any which way you like and play them and then just experiment with playing the scale over those chords and see what happens. So uh, let's just see uh, if I can knock something up here. I've just got my looper here. So, uh, yeah. should have stopped. There are some tools that I'm going to show you in the coming lessons that are going to help you a lot with improvising, note choices, phrasing, all of that sort of stuff. But this very first lesson, I just want you to have some fun. Just explore it. See what happens. Play the scale over some chords. Use the backing tracks provided. Just whatever. Just have a go. So I hope you have a lot of fun making music with your major scales. Of course, some of the practice is going to be like playing the scales up and down, but you want to be making music with them as well. I hope you join me for the next lesson where we check out the major scale chord theory. At the end of that lesson, I'll go through with you your practice for unit one, which is a combination of playing this stuff and using the chord theory in a practical way for some jamming if you got yourself a jam buddy. So I'll see you for that very soon. Bye-bye.